Marietje Schaken, you're a member of the European Parliament for D66. Um, welcome. I would like to discuss with you a couple of issues which I think this evening is, uh, is going to be about and it will be interesting to hear from you what your point of view are um, for the rest of the debate later, later tonight. Uh, let's start with this age of anxiety. It seems that people are, are very anxious about the, the, the things which are happening uh, worldwide but also within, within, uh, within for instance, the Netherlands or, or Western Europe. Um, and they seem to be very insecure, therefore, because of all this, ex uh, all this anxiety. Could you name a couple of important reasons why people could feel insecure nowadays in the world we're living in at the moment? Yes. Um, well, in, in the conversations I have with people that I meet uh, throughout my work, both in the Netherlands, in Europe and outside, I think we all observe a lot of rapidly changing uh, trends that are of a big scale. So uh, there's an economic crisis, of course, which uh, we don't know uh, where the end will be. We see um, climate change, we see uh, demographic developments at a very rapid pace, technological developments at a very rapid pace. And it's hard to keep the overview and to understand how you can keep a sense of control and ownership of your own surroundings. A lot of these massive global developments have an impact on the individual's uh, life, on citizens' lives, uh, but it's hard for them to control these very big flows and developments. And I think that that can create a sense of, yeah, um, unbalance or uncertainty. And you, you mentioned all kinds of developments which, which, which contribute to this feeling of, in, of insecurity. Is there, one, is there one main driver or is it the economy, is it technology, is it, is it a combination of all these developments in one spot as we are? Well, I think it's on the one hand these big trends and, yep. and it's a combination between the two because they also affect each other uh, in a significant way. Um, but when we look, for example, at... Um, uh, democracies and the institutions that usually provide some sort of guidance or uh, structure in our societies, we also see that from the bottom up uh, people feel empowered uh, and they form ad hoc coalitions which sometimes actually put into question the legitimacy and the authority of these institutions. So for example when we look at analysis of the economic crisis there are um, a lot of people who don't really care if an economic expert or academic with years of experience has a model that shows that the solution should lie in a certain direction because if they feel that the solution should lie elsewhere uh, then that is uh, what they're going to go with. So I think the tension between the, the institutions that were providing some sort of structure and uh, security in societies uh, and the empowerment of individuals. Uh, we see real challenges even in our own democracies, not only in North Africa or the Middle East, where there's a lot of uh, uh, serious changes yeah, going on, uh, also close to home. And um, although it, it seems um, relatively easy to say how things should not be or what is wrong with the existing system, I don't see uh, a lot of viable alternatives. So I think people are very eager to demonstrate, uh, to be critical, and I think they have every right to. Mm -hmm. But what I would hope is that there will be an opening up from the top, uh, reaching out to sort of this citizen-led um, uh, network or these horizontal structures rather, and that together we can uh, reform the democratic system to provide more anchors for people. Okay, so you believe in, in that the institutions do, have, do play a role in, in trying to reach out and to make these connections. Uh, why do you say this? Because you see that individuals, because of the insecurity and the anxiety, uh, how are they behaving because of this, this insecurity? How do you see people responding to, to this almost impotent feeling of, am I able to do anything? Well, sometimes I think uh, they're not doing enough. When I look at uh, students, for example, uh, the younger generation throughout Europe, a lot of them are unemployed and uh, many of them face a serious uh, heritage of an economic problem that they didn't create. Uh, and I think oftentimes people are creative to find a solution in their own life, but they don't necessarily uh, address the bigger problems. And I wish that young people would speak out more. Um, on the other hand, I do see people online connecting behind different causes uh, and in that way uh, bridging distances between, uh, between themselves and others mm -hmm. behind uh, certain causes. So some of them do find coalitions even worldwide to address environmental challenges or uh, freedom of speech issues or other causes that they believe in. 
Uh, and yet another trend, and I think we see a lot of this in the Netherlands at the moment, is to become more uh, nationalist, to try to uh, find uh, a more definable and familiar space to identify with. Um, and, and that translates into sort of nationalist, uh, protectionist tendencies. Let, let's, let's have a look at these tendencies, because I, I think they're particularly interesting. Because you say one of the responses we have is, is trying to connect again to this national identity. Could you, is this the Sicherheit that people are talking about, and, and which Freud uh, has mentioned as, on the one hand, there is well, the searching for freedom, but on the other hand, people are, especially in anxiety, t in anxious times, uh, are looking for, yeah, for, for assurance, safety, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Is, is, that, is that a trend that you, you see now? Well, I think people are looking for this kind of certainty, yeah. uh, but they do not trust the state to provide it, or mm -hmm. they do not trust the existing institutions to provide it. And perhaps uh, this is more an um, um, expression of a lack of opportunity, because if you feel like you have an opportunity and, and uh, a room and a way to, to take oh, ownership of your own life, then you don't have to feel so overwhelmed by these global uh, developments. But if you feel like there's a lot happening, there's not much you can do, uh, you want certainty, but the state is not providing it. And in fact, the people who are claiming to provide it, uh, you can't trust anymore, or you don't believe in anymore, or you don't think are legitimately telling you uh, or the country how things should be. Uh, there's a paradox there. So I think we must look at how we can empower people to take ownership and responsibility of their own lives uh, and that that way hopefully um, they can themselves take responsibility for their own uh, certainty and freedom at the same time. But what's so interesting is that you say okay let's empower people but what's the, the biggest paradox I think of all is that you mentioned there is there is all kinds of, of te technology we can use nowadays we don't trust the institution anymore but should we trust the institution because we are better and better educated so all these tools of empowerment being educated having this technology i mean we can nowadays organize our own lives can't we so how do you relate this to this increasing mm -hmm. possibilities mm -hmm. and on the other hand this search for sicherheit well whether people really experience a sense of expanding possibilities this is the question. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lack of investing in education that's really accessible for everyone and that actually prepares you for the job market because there is a challenge at the job market so a lot of people don't think that their education is good enough and I think it should also be better to be more competitive in a global economy. I mean Europe should really become a more um, more deeply um, um, focused knowledge economy instead of accepting that we have good education but globally speaking we're losing mm -hmm. uh, position compared to other players so I don't know if, if we are at the point yet where we where we should be some people um, may well be empowered through the use of these technologies or being connected with others but there's of course a big group of people who are not at all uh, maneuvering in these networks yeah. or feeling um, so feeling the, connected the, the tools are there but the tools are not used yet. Is that one of the main issues then when you, I think that's when you one, mention? I think that's one issue, but I think there's also a sense of exclusion that people um, experience. Yep. Exclusion from the circles of decision making, of closed systems, sort of old boys networks, which applies to a younger generation, you know, that doesn't always have a voice or an influence on the decisions that are being made. Mm -hmm. But it applies to, uh, to people, of course, when they're outside of the job market, when they don't feel like they have the skills or the abilities to uh, take ownership of, of their own destinies. And um, I think that segregation, I guess, or, or living in, in kind of closed um, communities or, or worlds that people experience mm -hmm. uh, is going to present a challenge combined with the fact that people do not necessarily accept the legitimacy of the authorities which are supposed to uh, manage our societies. And is it, is, why you're saying this, does it also then mean that our freedom is decreasing, our level of freedom or our feeling of freedom because of these phenomena that you just explained? I think people feel that in the streets or uh, uh, in their daily lives, yeah. when there's uh, uh, less job security or when they think that their, their life is more uncertain, they can experience uh, a sense of 
well, anxiety, as you called it, or uncertainty, uh, while legally speaking, on paper, their, their rights and their freedoms may well uh, be as guaranteed yeah. as they always have been. Yeah. But if they don't experience it, if they don't feel it, uh, then perception uh, becomes truth at yeah. some point. And in a lot of uh, European countries, not in the Netherlands, thank thankfully, but uh, in Greece, in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, there have been much more uh, strong confrontations between uh, people who went in the street to demonstrate against uh, budget cuts, for example, and, and the police. So this, these tensions can actually um, uh, well, be magnified uh, if, if things get worse. And it doesn't mean that the laws change or the freedoms actually change, but it means that the feelings that people have of uncertainty become uh, actions and uh, uh, can have an impact. Let's lastly have a look at this perception, because I think that that's, in, that's in, interesting to, to, to wind up with. Um, is there a way to change this perception so, so maybe factual our human rights or our freedom is not that endangered at all or, or maybe the perception of it but I mean the factual rights are there. What, are, what, what tools do we have or which, which uh, um, solutions do you see to change this perception which people seem to be to have in their head and increasingly are voicing and, and are well, using their democratic vote for it? Yeah, well, there's not one magic solution, but one thing I believe we should at least try is to open up these institutions, which are indeed often very closed off sort of, you know, um, networks that have been this, or institutions that have been organized the same way for a long, long time, and people don't really know what's going on inside of them. No. Governments have become kind of closed off, whether they're local or national or European. And I think if we can open up these institutions, which, uh, after all, should serve the people, uh, and make more information available about what, what the government is doing, uh, you know, what these institutions are doing, and using new technologies and transparency to also involve people in the decision making. Uh, we see small examples on a local scale where municipalities, the, the local governments, are including people in spending the budget on about 30% of the annual budget. So citizens can come together and decide where they want to invest in their mm -hmm. local community. I think that's a way to involve people uh, to give them an insight also that it's not so easy uh, to run a city or to run uh, a country, but also to give them uh, a voice in how their budget, their public, uh, public funds are being spent. And so if we open up uh, institutions that are historically closed off and actually reach out to people and involve them in the decision making, then perhaps that can give a sense of um, inclusion, a sense of uh, a voice and impact on the outcome. Uh, and it's well, it's a democratizing or a democratic process uh, that, that increases transparency and involvement. So um, that would be a way uh, which could start at the local level uh, okay. to change this. Okay. Thanks so much for your contribution. Thank Let's you. see what other guests uh, think of uh, tonight. But uh, it's a great start for a discussion. Thanks so okay. much. Thanks.